Hello and welcome to The Shiny Things. In this video, I will unbox my first T-Shock, I will go over the key features of this watch, and I will share 5 things I like about this watch and 4 that I don't. 4? Really? Yes, 4. Alright, let's get on with it then. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you are already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you are new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, it does help us to bring you more reviews. Also, the links where you can find the watch in this video and other watches that we reviewed in the past are in the description box below. After going through countless model variations, I finally settled on this one. B5600HR, Bluetooth, black and red, heritage series, and I will explain why as we progress through the review. For the price band, somewhere between 100 and 200 US dollars, and this is the price range of most watches in this Square G-Shock series, it is such an interesting watch. Its subtle simplicity is very deceiving. It has enormous pedigree, a great story behind its development, which I will not get into in this video. There are plenty of videos on the subject on YouTube already. And when it comes to Hollywood blockbusters product placement, it can very well compete with Amigas and Rolexes of this world just to mention a few movies to give you an idea. Schwarzenegger wore it in Running Man, Keanu Reeves in Speed, Tom Cruise had it on his wrist in Mission Impossible, and the list goes on. This is also a space watch. It has been to space quite a few times. As a matter of fact, there are a number of G-Shock models that are specifically certified by NASA for space travel, and a DW5600 G-Shock that traveled to space is now on display in NASA Museum. It even holds a Guinness World Record for heaviest vehicle to drive over a watch. Right, it is unboxing and so it is only fair to see what's in the box. Package is minimalistic and to the point, a user manual that I will most likely need to read, a quick start troubleshooting kind of brochure to get you going before you have a chance to read that user manual, an international warranty card and warranty booklet with all the places where you can service your Casio if you have to. Then we get to a nifty, probably already familiar to G-Shock owners, hexagon metal box. And inside is the Casio G-Shock, all wrapped up and cushioned. 43.5mm across, bezel 34mm vertically and 37.5mm horizontally. The watch case is 12.5mm high with almost 1mm protrusion of the bezel above the dial glass, which provides that additional crystal protection. Because of the tight integration of the case and the bracelet, the bracelet width doesn't exactly correspond to the lug's width. In general, my understanding is that if you would want to replace the bracelet with anything aftermarket, you will need to purchase an adapter as well. But to give you a general idea, the bracelet width at the case is about 25mm. 22 millimeters at the end of the first link and then tapering down to just under 19 millimeters. Double pusher clasp is 20 millimeters wide. 48 millimeters lock to lock distance, if you can name it that. The bracelet integration is quite seamless as I just mentioned, so it is not immediately clear where the case ends and the bracelet begins. End to end link is 59 and a half millimeters which may sound a bit high, however, Casio curved the end links nicely down to allow for comfortable wrist placement, so the case and the bracelet will hug the wrist quite nicely and will allow for comfortable wear on the smaller than 7-inch wrists. This is a very light watch, only 85 grams, which works quite well for the tool watch that it is. And at full length, the bracelet should fit a 9-inch wrist. This watch comes with mineral glass, and I will talk a bit more about it in a moment, as for the display, it is a negative display, which is one of the reasons I went for this watch. Badass and stealthy. Also, it looks like Casio did lately some improvements in terms of legibility of their negative displays. Having said that, this might not be everyone's cup of tea, and the classic displays are still easier to read at a glance at various angles. While we're on the subject of display, another point and another reason why I went for this particular model, it allows for different date format. So if you are in USA, you can use a default month's date format. However, now if you are in Europe, Australia or New Zealand, for example, you can set the format to read date, month as well. The case is done from a good quality resin. 
It is matte black and feels quite premium. I'm not quite sure how premium plastic is supposed to feel though, however, this watch feels quite pleasant and you could feel it's light and yet sturdy. There is a very little flex in the case, also the matte surface does not attract fingerprints. The inner part of the case is done in red resin and the top in black, so it is not a red color strip that will scratch off in the first opportunity. I like the back case of this particular model, it looks milled rather than pressed, giving it a bit more solid and premium look. Looks like this is what Casio use on most of their tough solar series of these watches. There is also a screw back case version on this series of watches, but expect to pay more for those. Another reason I went for this model is the bracelet. It is light, comfortable and I like the subtle red-black classic color combination. The links are made of resin and they feel very similar to the case, light and sturdy. Also, the red parts are the actual part of the link fully molded from red plastic, so no rubbing off here of red paint either. I am not too worried about the press clasp, if anything it contributes to the lightweight of the watch. I do like the little plastic patch with the G-Shock logo, looks nice and should provide extra scratch protection for the clasp. There are four micro adjustments, which is good. There are other G-Shock Squares versions that come with the rubber band, which is okay, however, personally I prefer bracelets with a clasp, because in my opinion, if it is a get up and go watch, I don't want to fiddle with a buckle. Also, if I had a penny for every time I dropped a watch while trying to fasten a buckle, I would be probably quite rich. So if I can help it, I always go for the bracelet or for the strap with a clasp. This is a tough solar range, which I fully appreciate, however, I do wonder what was going through minds of Casio designers at the time when they were designing this watch. You see, G-Shocks normally come with 10-year battery life. However, someone in Casio design department obviously thought, nah, 10 years only? Nah, something needs to be done about this. Oh yes, how about solar-powered watch? This way we can extend the battery life by uh, forever? forever? Brilliant. Not only it is solar powered, it is actually quite smart about it. For example, it is capable of running without any light exposure for 22 months on a full charge. And it has power saving mode and the power mode indicators on the dial. So, apart from the tough solar, what else is special about this watch? Well, quite a bit as a matter of fact. It features a multiband 6, which supports automatic time setting adjustment via one of the six time calibration signals around the globe. Unfortunately, these are not available everywhere, but even then this watch will maintain a super accurate time and also can be adjusted via the mobile app. It supports 39 city wall time. It features stopwatch with up to one hundredths of a second precision, five alarms, countdown timer, automatic illumination of the dial, which can be set to two or four seconds long, and of course, a Bluetooth connectivity, which allows you to control most of the above mentioned features via the mobile app and more, like an ability to find your phone. I will cover this in more details in my full review. So, after spending a few hours with this watch, what are the five things that I like? Well, in no particular order. At number one, I really like the stealthy look and subtle design of this watch. At number two, I also like the great pedigree of this watch, the history and the fact that it is a space watch. At number three, I definitely like the bracelet. I like the material and the subtle color combination. At number four, the back case looks good and more premium than a pressed case on other models in this series. And at number five, Bluetooth functionality, definitely more than meets the eye and separates it from the other watches in the series. So what are the negatives? I really was hard pressed to find five negatives about this watch that are worthwhile to put on the list. That's why I only came up with four. I am sure that after I spend some time with this watch and I get more familiar with it and the Bluetooth functionality, I will be able to extend the list. But for now, this is what I can point out from this initial unboxing experience. Well, sapphire crystal instead of mineral glass would definitely be nice. I like the bracelet, however, there is no quick adjustment, which I think such a tool watch could benefit from. Negative display could be hard to read at some angles. 
This is a funny one because the negative display is the main reason or one of the main reasons why I went for this watch in the first place. And number four, last but not least, now I feel myself falling into a rabbit hole of must-have G-Shocks, which spells trouble for my bank account, like this Royal Oak one, which is on my list to get next. Do you have a favorite G-Shock? If yes, what is it? Please let us know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. And of course, hit that like button or the other one if you feel that way. We appreciate the feedback. Thank you for tuning in. All the best. Take care. And I'll see you in the next one.